Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring John Wayne, Joanne Drew, and Walter Brennan in Red River. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. There is in all of us a hidden spirit of adventure that responds to the thrills and suspense of Western drama. And tonight, we have a prize example of this kind of entertainment. It's the current success, Red River. Packed theaters have greeted this story of elemental emotion and romance in the Old West. And naturally, we're presenting it with the original star of the Monterey production, John Wayne. That great favorite of filmgoers everywhere, making his first appearance here tonight. And with John, we have two other members of the screen cast, Joe Andrew and Walter Brennan. If every man secretly longs to be a Western hero, I suppose every woman sees herself as eternally young and lovely. And that's the right point for Lux Toilet Soap to enter, because millions of women have chosen Lux Soap Care as the best way to guard complexion beauty. Now we're off to Red River and act one of tonight's play. Starring John Wayne as Tom Dunson, Joanne Drew as Tess, and Walter Brennan as Groot. This is a story of Tom Dunson and Matthew Garth. Likewise, it's a story of a cattle brain. The brand known as the Red River D. And this is the way it all started. August it was of 1851. Tom Dunson and me had joined a wagon train from California. And when we got close to the northern border of Texas... Are you crazy, Dunson? You can't leave us. You signed on. You agreed that we you... We signed nothing, Colonel. Now, wait a minute. You know this is Indian country. Yeah, mister, we know that. We can't afford to lose two men, and we can't afford to lose your livestock. Livestock? One bull and two cows? Well, we need them. We need the beginnings of herds in California. Only we're not going to California. I've watched this land. It's good land. Good grass for beef. I'm going south and starting my own herd. Now, look, Dunson. I'd ponder on letting him be, mister. He's a mighty set man when his mind's made up. Well, tell him I wish him luck. You. I'll send for you, Fenn, just as soon as I can. I want to go with you, Tom, now. Oh, it's no use, Fenn. you got to stay with the train. Tom, please. I'm strong. I can stand anything you can. It's too much for a woman. Too much for a woman. Put your arms around me, Tom. Feel me in your arms. Do I feel weak, Tom? Oh, you'll need me. Fenn, I'll send for you just Listen as soon as... Listen to me, Tom, please. I've made up my mind. Then for once in your life, change your mind. This... This bracelet, Finn, was my mother's. I want you to have it. Oh, Tom, please let me. Goodbye, Finn. I could see the sun shining on that bracelet as we pulled away from the wagon train. Me and Tom and two cows and a bull. By evening, we'd come as far as the river. Red River, Groot. And that's Texas on the other side. How about calling it a day? Seems to me we... Tom. Tom, look. There to the north. Indian smoke. Signal smoke? It's too big, ain't it? It's not signal. It's rising from just about where the wagon train would be. Take us hours to get back there. Finn, I should have brought her along. We could be wrong, Tom. That smoke, maybe it's just prairie grass or something. We'll maybe... ride back tomorrow and see. <laughs> started back the next morning when we seen him. A boy from the wagon train. He comes staggering out of the brush, crazy-like, talking to himself and dragging a cow on the end of a halter. Smoking and burning. Burn. What happened, boy? Um, what are you doing here? What happened? Smoking. Smoking and burning. 
Smoking. How'd you get away? Everything Burn he's out of his head, Tom. Wagons and people were screaming. <laughs> I wouldn't hit me again, mister. Put that gun down. I said don't do that again. It's all right, son. I just wanted to... See? <laughs> Take his gun, Groot. You just learned something, boy. Don't ever trust anybody till you know him. Thanks for telling me. Now, how'd you get away? My cow here. She broke loose. Got off in the brush. I was bringing her back when I heard him. Then I saw him. And I wish I hadn't. When they left, I went closer. There was no one alive. It could be. Some of them got away. One of, one of the Indians. Been hit, I guess. Must have thought he was dead. What about him? Took a shot at me. I killed him. He, he had something in his hand. This silver bracelet. <sighs> Tom, that don't have to mean she... Shut up. Well, it looks like we'll have to take you along with us, son. Give him back his gun, Groot. Well, are you going to use it? No, but don't ever try to take it away from me again. That was the meeting of the man and the boy. And the beginning of a great herd. We started south through Texas, through the Panhandle, past the Pecos, until one day near the Rio Grande, Tom got off on his horse and took the feeling of the grass and smelling of it. This is it. This is the land, Groot. This is where we start growing beef. Sure looks good. Maybe even worth coming 2,000 miles for who does it all belong to? From now on, it belongs to me. Take a good look. Someday all this land, as far as you can see, will be covered with beef cattle. I'll put a mark on them, a brand to show they're mine. What kind of a mark? Well, there'll be two lines, see? Like this, like the banks of a river. And the letter D. D for Dunson, a Red River D brand. You gonna brand my cow, too? Why not? D's for Dunson. But my name's Matthew Garth. Maybe someday you'll earn a piece of the brand, but until you do... Oh, strangers coming. Huh? Two of them. Mexicans. I ain't never seen a Mexican. Well, keep your eyes open, boy. Step off to one side. Buenos dias, senores. We saw the smoke of your fire. Yeah? To remain here on Don Diego's land, you are welcome. For a night, for a week, for absolute You, month. Diego? Oh, no, senor. He is at his home across the Rio Grande, 600 kilometers to the south. How far is that? About 400 miles. That's too much land for one man. It ain't decent. Tell Don Diego that, that all the land north of the river is mine. Tell him to stay off it. But the land is his, senor. That get away. How did he get it? Many years ago, by grant from the king of Spain. You mean he took it away from whoever was here before? Indians, maybe. Maybe so. Well, I'm taking it away from him. I regret, senor, but... Now, how about you? You want a little of it? No. He's not my land, senor. I, I will wait until Don Diego tells me what to do. Then ride back and tell him what happened. Take your friend's horse. As for him, he'll get a decent burial. As you say, senor. Matt, I told you to get away. You might have got hurt. He went for his gun first. But you kind of seem to know. Next time, do what I say. But how'd you know when he was going to draw? By watching his eyes. Remember that. I will. Now, go get a shovel out of the wagon. In my Bible, I'll read over him. We're here, Groot. We're going to stay here. The big house will be down near the river. The corrals and the barns behind it. It'll be a good place to live in. Give me ten years and I'll have the Red River be on more cattle than you've looked at anywhere. Enough beef to feed the whole country. But it'll take work and sweat and time. It'll be years. Years yet. You, Matt, where's that shovel? And it happened just like he said. Tom Dunson, who'd come here with next to nothing, had the biggest ranch in Texas. One day we was riding in after Roundup, me and Dunson and the kid. Only Matt wasn't a kid no more. Growed up he was. A dark man like Dunson, able and hard. Cattle. Nothing but cattle as far as I can see. That's what we wanted, wasn't it? We had our ten years, Groot. 
And more. Oh, it'll be about 14 now. Thousands a head of good beef. And as they stand out there, what are they worth? There isn't a head worth a plug three cent piece. What are you talking about? It all happened while you were away at war, Matt. The South got beat. No money in the South. No market. Unless we can move that herd, I'm broke. Broke? I'm not going to take it hunched back like the rest around here. If there's no market for cattle in Texas... And they ain't. Then I'll take my cattle to where there is a market. Missouri? Yeah. I figured. Oh, while you're at it, did you figure a way to get them there? Yeah. San Saba, then Meridian, then along the Brazos. What about water? Well, there's good water clear up to the red. Yeah, but going that way, we'd have two extra crossings. We, you're not going. I'm not How going do you know there. the water? No, you're not. Well, How do you know the water's good? I let a patrol that way. Well, do you think it's worth... What are you mumbling about? Where are those store teeth Matt brought you? In my pocket. Well, why don't you use them? Because they whistle. I use them for eating. I can't understand you. Well, everybody else can. What'd you say? I said there's a lot of things you don't know about, Mr. Dunst. Like what? Like first off about me going on this here drive. It's a thousand miles to Missouri, ain't it? That's right. Well, you figure I couldn't ride that far on account of my bad leg, huh? That's right. Well, it might be I could ride a chuck wagon. We've already got a cook. That is right, Mr. Dunson. But might be old Cookie might not like grubbing the trip all that way. Might also be up and quit this morning. You heard me good that time, didn't you? Well, then it might be we could persuade you to drive the chuck wagon. Might be, Mr. Dunson, might be. Matt, that's a pretty nice gun you're wearing. How good's your gun arm? I've been using it a lot these last few years. You know, that's a funny thing. A draw! <laughs> I haven't heard that laugh since I joined the army. He beat you, Mr. Dunson. He beat you to the draw and a kick beat you. He sure did, Matt. <laughs> Somebody beat you. <laughs> He's a little faster, ain't he, Mr. Dunson? Just a mite faster, huh? Say, Matt, when we get back, drop a map of that country we were talking about. I did. And I'll ha- it's on your desk. Oh, mite faster about a lot of things. See you later. You know, Matt, that's the first time I've seen a grin on his face all year. Except the other day when you come home. Oh, he's changed, Groot. Oh, he's changed some, sure. Well, why wouldn't he change? Fighting with soul and gut to hang on to this place. It cost him dear, too. It cost him a woman, the only woman he ever wanted. Yeah, I know. It cost him the killing of them seven graves on the hill there. Men that try to take this place away from him, and now this. What, the drive? You don't think it can be done, huh? 10,000 head of cattle clear to Missouri. No, mister, I don't think it can be done. You don't neither. I'm glad you come home to us, Matt. I'm glad you come home. All that week, sun up to dark, herding cattle into corrals and branding them with the Red River D. Now and then we'd find a steer from the south. That, uh, that'd be the Mexican steer, Don Diego's. Uh, one branded with a circle M, and that'd be from the east, where, uh, where a fellow named Meeker had neighbored up. Hey, Matt, Mother Diego. Let him go, Taylor. Let him go. Let him go. Another Meeker. Turn him loose. Turn nothing loose. Put a brand on him. He's a Meeker steer, boss. I said brand name. You're going to wind up branding every hide in the state of Texas, except mine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Missouri with every head I can lay my hands on. I think Meeker might be real pleased to know about that. That I'll argue with Meeker. Now might be a good time. It's him riding up right now, isn't it? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's Meeker. He's even got some men to back him up. Oh, Dunson. I hear you're fixing to make a drive. News travels fast, Meeker. We're going to Missouri. That's what I heard. Also heard something else. Cumberland drove 3,000 head to the Red River. When he got across the Missouri border, a gang stole his herd and killed half his men. Hard luck. Nobody's going to jump my cattle. I don't want anybody to take mine either. Mind if I look your herd over? I do mind. Now look, Dunson, everything I got. I know, Meeker. Me too. All right. We've rounded up some of your stock and some of Diego's and some of everybody else's around here. Well, then... I haven't the time nor the inclination to cut them out. I'll drive them to Missouri and give you two dollars a head when I get back here. If you don't get back. That's your gamble. I reckon it is. All right. Suits me. Brand them all, Matt. Anything that can walk. And tell every hand on the place to be in the bunkhouse after supper. I got a word to say to them. (laughs) 
What I come to tell you, boys, is simply this. We start for Missouri tomorrow morning. Now, most of you men have come back to Texas from the war. You came back to nothing. Your home's gone. Your cattle scattered. Your land stolen by carpetbaggers. Well, there's no money and no work because there's no market for beef in the South. There is in Missouri. So we're going to Missouri. Cumberland tried to go to Missouri too, boss. And Cumberland didn't make it. No one else ever has. We got a thousand miles to go. Ten miles a day will be good. Fifteen will be luck. There'll be dry country, dry wells when we get to them. There'll be wind and storms, and there's going to be Indian territory. How bad, I don't know. But we'll get there. Now, nobody has to come along. But remember this. Every man who signs on for this drive agrees to finish it. There'll be no quitting along the way, not by me and not by you. Any questions? Well, I... I guess we're all with you, Mr. Dunson. Yeah. Well, good. Well, the wages will be $10 a month. Triple if the steers bring $15 at the railroad. But if we lose the herd, you lose your wages. I won't have the money to pay you. Now sign them on, Matt. We start at sunup. Ready, Matt? All ready. Take them to Missouri. <laughs> Fourteen years of hard work. And then they say we can't make the drive. It's never been done before, and it could be wrong. Yeah, they'd better be. After a brief intermission, you'll hear Act Two of Red River. Now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins, with news about the stars. My list tonight, Mr. Keeley, is an extra special one. Three famous stars, all in the same picture. Mm, I wouldn't have to guess twice that the picture is 20th Century Fox's A Letter to Three Wives, <laughs> a picture with a top-notch cast. Three quite different types, too. There's Jean Crane. She's most appealing in the role of a young and unsophisticated wife. And Southern, as the smart career wife, does an A1 job of acting. And for glamour personified, we have Linda Darnell. They all make a letter to three wives a sparkling comedy, with plenty of mystery and romance, too. And real drama as well. Those country club dancer scenes, for instance, yes, were... Yes, where Jean has such a dismal time trying to be a social success. Jean told me she has reason to remember that dance scene... They rehearsed it for several days. Well, even dancing is no fun, if you have to keep at it that long. Well, it was strenuous, all right. Everyone would leave the set exhausted. But being a Lux girl, Jean depended on a quick beauty pickup. A refreshing Lux soap beauty bath did the trick, she told me. Well, now that their beauty soap is in big new bath size, screen stars say a Lux soap bath is more luxurious than ever. Well, I can't imagine a nicer bath soap, John. Wonderful, creamy lather, even in hard water. And a lovely, delicate fragrance that lasts and lasts. The Luxo perfume is an exclusive blend, you know. It combines lily of the valley, lilac, carnation, and other delicate flower fragrances. I'm sure every woman who tries the big new bath size Lux toilet soap will love it. Yes, that generous satin smooth bath cake is a good item to put at the head of your shopping list. Why not try the new bath size Lux toilet soap tomorrow? It's another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company. We return you now to William Keeley. Act two of Red River, starring John Wayne as Tom Dunson, Joanne Drew as Tess, and Walter Brennan as Groot. <laughs> So we drove north, 10,000 cattle, wagons, horses, and 40-some men, crawling through hot, dry country. The dust made things bad, and it was hard work. At the end of the first two weeks, we'd come 160 miles. Trouble with you, Matt. You make the drive look too easy. A lot of rough boys along the border. I just got back from there. 
You know what happens, Cherry, if this drive doesn't get to market? According to Dunson, we lose our wages. You just been all through this state. What did you see? Yeah, I know. Cattle running wild, carpet baggers grabbing with both hands. I seen a man once trying to swap a steer for a half a sack of flour. Then you know why we gotta get through. But why drive to Missouri? Why not Kansas? There's a railroad in Kansas, too. What'd you say? Where in Kansas? Oh, I saw the one in Topeka. And there's one in Abilene. And I met a fellow named Jess Chisholm, Indian trader. Told me he'd blaze a trail straight through this country into Kansas. We could pick it up at the Red River. That way we'd have only Indians to worry about. Yeah, I heard of that trail. Uh, this railroad in Abilene, did you see it? Well, I didn't quite get there. Met a girl in Kansas City. Groot, if we could head west at the yeah, Red River. we sure save ourselves a heap We're of... We're going to Missouri. I've seen buyers and cash in Missouri. What have you seen in Abilene, Cherry? Not a thing, Mr. Dunson, but a girl... We're told... going to Missouri. What's going on? What are you stopping them for? This water here looks pretty good. Well, the radar just came from up ahead. There's water there, too. Four or five miles. Tom, the men have beat. They've had a pretty tough day, and I think they ought to... I'll do the thinking. Keep them going. Keep them going, Taylor. We're moving on. Why can't we... I said we're moving on. It was like that day after day for a month. The herd is getting tired. They were spooky and restless, and it was all we could do to keep them together. All right, pull up, group. We'll bed down here. All right, man. Hi, Laredo. Just get in? Yeah. Got any coffee and grub? Yeah, I'll get you some. What do you find up there, Laredo? Good water for three days. Uh, where's Dunson? Out with the herd. See them coyotes? That means double guard tonight. Well, at least ways he's a full moon. You see the herd clear down at the wash. Oh, thanks for the grub. Where do these pans go, Group? Back in the wagon, Laredo, but don't make too much noise with them, neither, will you? They're tin, you know, and it wouldn't take much to scare them steers. I wish that coyote had quit yowling. It's fretting them. Dust and wind today put them on the prod. Wouldn't take much to stampede the whole outfit. I was in a stampede once. I don't want no more of them. An owl hooted, just hooted, and the whole bunch was off. That's when old man White and three fellas got trumped to death. Yeah, I remember that. No stampedes from me. I, I don't like them. I don't like coyotes. There he is on the rocks. Watch. Put down that gun. I could get him with one shot. In one shot right now, and the whole herd would start running. Yeah, I guess you're right. It must be close. Who's in that wagon? Oh, Stop, please! 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 Stampede. 10,000 head of cattle gone loco. Like an avalanche bearing down on you, pounding everything to dust that tries to stand before it. Horses, wagons, men, everything. Sometime before dawn, they run themselves out. We crowded them up in the canyon, miles from the camp. Tom Dunson was late coming back. He had a body slung across his saddle. Where is he, Tom? Adams. Danny Adams. Dead. It was right in their path when they started off. Give me a hand, Matt. Adams. We'll bury him and I'll read over him. Matt, about his wife. See that she gets full pay for the drive just as if he'd finished it and, and get her, well, get her something. He used to talk about getting her a pair of red shoes when oh, we got back. Oh, that's foolishness. Get her something that she... Yeah. Get her a pair of red shoes. We buried Dan later that morning. Nobody left after Dunson closed his Bible. He stood there in front of the grave and said for Sam Connolly to step out. Last night, a man sneaked into the chuck wagon. Not because he was hungry. He went in to take some sugar. Stealing sugar like a kid. That's how the stampede started. He knocked over a pile of tin plates. It was me, Mr. Dunson. I'm, I'm not denying The tally will show we're three or four hundred heads short. 
And you killed Dan Adams as sure as if you'd shot him. I know I did. I know it. And I'd give my right arm... Stealing sugar like a kid. Well, they whip kids to teach them better. They what? Cherry, Teeler, time to that wagon oh, wheel. No. I was wrong, awful wrong, Mr. Dunson, but nobody's going to whip me. Turn around, Conley. Don't raise that whip, Mr. Dunson. Turn around, he'll get it across the don't eyes. Don't do it, Mr. Dunson, I tell you, don't. <laughs> Matt. Sorry, Conley, he'd have shot you through the heart. Just as sure as you're standing there. Well, you shot him, Matt. Take care of him. For the rest of you, there's a thousand heads still to round up. Get at it. Well, Groot. Go ahead and say it. Well, since you give me leave, I will. You was wrong, Mr. Dunson. Oh, after Pat patches up that arm, put Conley on a horse and give him rations and send him home. The stampede had cost us close to 400 head and three of our wagons. Wagons filled with food. Next day, we got rain. Rain steady for ten days, and rain does something to you. Rain and short rations and Tom Dunson. The men was getting off near mutiny, and Tom knew it. He just kept watching them, watching them all the time. Shut up, Taylor. He's coming. Dunson. What's on your mind, Taylor? It's this lousy muck. A man can't eat this kind of food three times a day. He's right, Mr. Dunson. After we lost the grub wagons, we should have turned back. But we didn't turn back, Laredo. And even if we had, I couldn't replace what was lost. I'm broke. I got nothing to buy with. So we're on short rations and bad coffee, and we're going to be until we finish the drive. And we're going to finish it. Not me, Mr. Dunson. Who said that? I said it. Me, Buck Mailer. I'm heading south. I'm leaving now, and the Mexican's coming with me. Senor Dunson. I think I die anyway. So if I die, I go south to die. At least my people can find my grave and maybe put some flowers on it. There was an agreement made when you men signed on. I'm going to hold you to it. How? I don't want to have to kill you, Mailer. You're not going to get a chance. Who else is quitting? All right. I get back to the herd. There's two quitters to be buried. I'll read over them in the morning. Fill a man full of lead. Stick him in the ground and then read words at him. What's the matter, Laredo? When you kill a man, Cherry, why try to read the Lord in as a partner on the job? Where are you going, Matt? To see, Dunson. Oh. What do you want, Matt? That shooting. You didn't have to do that. You joined in. Yeah, when they both drew on you, but I still thought you were wrong. Look, I'm telling you now... Don't tell but... me what to think. Take your orders about work, but not about what to think. You think I was to blame for what's happened? Just as sure as you're standing there. Get on your horse and ride her. Not till that night did I know Tom Dunson had been shot. One of the deserters had hit him in the leg. I found him alone, trying to get his boot off. Got a hole through your leg, huh? Yeah. Here's some stuff I better pour on it. How did you know? Oh, <laughs> I'm sitting in the wagon there watching you suffer. Went clean through, huh? Well, ain't as bad as it should be. You too? What do you got to say? Nothing. If I did, you wouldn't listen. Now hold still while I pour this stuff on. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hurts, huh? <sighs> I'd better give you a mite more. Now, if you'll quit your squalling, I got some news for you. Well? We shy three men. Teela, Laredo, and Bill Davis are gone. Gone where? I don't know. We're missing cartridges, flour, and a mite of salt. Mm. Tell Matt to come here. No, wait. Get Cherry Valance. Now. Yeah, I know this, Skip, Mr. Dunson. So does every man in camp. I want you to bring him back, Cherry. Take Grant and Mac. That'll and be enough. Find them. Suppose them they won't come. Bring them. Sure. We'll leave right away. From now on, Groot, this outfit's gonna move. Go tell them that for me. And move we did. There's Tom driving us every every step. 
The boys all hoped that Taylor and Laredo and Davis would get away, but we was afraid Cherry and Grant was too good, too fast to their guns. Anyways, we kept on driving until... Well, here's your Red River, Tom. Sure had a lot smaller herd last time we crossed. Uh -huh. One bull and three cows. Well, this looks like as good a place as any to cross over. Well, why not cross fresh in the morning? We've got a pretty tired bunch behind us. Tired men don't run away. You can't keep this war out all the rest of the drive. No, but we can keep this war out till Cherry and Grant get back. After that, nobody will want to run away. You need sleep, too. You need it bad. Some nights ago, we lost three men. I haven't slept since, and we haven't lost any more men. We're not going to lose another one tonight or from now on. Fletcher, Gus, start marking the river. We'll cross here. <laughs> Next morning, four riders from the south crossed the Red River and came up to us. Cherry Valance and Grant was back. With them was Taylor and Laredo. Taylor and Laredo, huh? Sent you out after three of them, Cherry. Where's Davis? Well, Davis figured he'd rather fight. Made a good one of it for a while. You two signed on for the drive. Signed on to finish it. That's right, we did. We didn't figure you... You stole food and cartridges. Besides being deserters, you're common thieves. I know what you're going to do to us, Dunson, but first I want to tell you something. Go ahead. You're crazy. You were all right when we started this drive, but you're crazy now. You finished? No. You want to get this herd to market? Well, so do all of us. There's a good way to Abilene. But you won't listen to that, no. You want to drive into Missouri when you've got the high, low, and jack against you. I shouldn't have run away. I should have stayed and put a bullet in you. Anything to add to that, Laredo? Nothing. You can send for your Bible and read over us after you shut us down. I'm not going to shoot you. I'm going to hang you. No, Tom. No, you're not. Who'll stop me? I will. Don't reach, Mr. Dunson. I got two guns in back of you. Throw me that rope, Jerry. Take his gun and tie his hands. Mm. Taylor, Laredo, you want to finish this job? Where to? Kansas. Abilene. Who's heading it? I am. What about Dunson? He stays. We're taking the herd. That's good enough for me. All right, what about you others? Yeah, I will you, Matt. Groot? Oh, I don't know. What's the matter, Groot? Scared? What can I do? No gun and my arm's tied. I've been with you a lot of years, Mr. Dunson, and right or wrong, all is done like you said. Got to be kind of a habit with me, I guess. So that's why I'm staying with you. Go with him. Thanks. Thanks for making it easy on me. All right, Matt. Tom, we're going to leave you here. With food and your gun and a horse. Don't come after us alone, Tom. There's more than 30 men with me who'll be glad to kill you. You'll do better to let them kill me now. You men, throw that herd on the trail and start driving. If there's any chance, Tom, any chance at all, we'll get your cattle to Abilene. I'll catch up with you, Matt. I don't know when or how, but I'll catch up with you. Every time you turn around, expect to see me. Because one time you'll turn around and I'll be there. I'm going to kill you, Matt. So we left Dunson staring out after us. We felt his eyes on us long after we couldn't see him no more. We took his herd away from him and we went on. Nobody's saying nothing about it. But all of us knowing that one day, one day he'd catch up. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Before we present the third act of Red River, 
It's a pleasure to introduce our guest tonight, a charming young actress, Maggie Sheridan. We're delighted to have you with us, Maggie. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. I'm happy to be here. And especially tonight, because it gives me an opportunity to congratulate John Wayne in person on his great performance in Wake of the Red Witch. Yes, John has certainly made a hit in Republic's new melodrama of the South Seas. He's right at home in the role of a tough, adventurous sea captain. He has to be tough, doesn't he? To cope with Luther Adler, who plays the revengeful ship owner. The bitter feud between those two really makes a hair-raising story. Yes, the hardiest adventure fan will be satisfied with a thrilling action in Wake of the Red Witch. And romance seekers won't be disappointed either. No, not with Gail Russell as the French heroine Angelique. She's well-named, Mr. Keeley, because she looks like an angel, especially in that candlelight scene at the piano. Yes, I remember that scene. It's a charming one, too. The studio gowned her perfectly in an off-the-shoulder white evening dress, just the dress, Mr. Kennedy, to set off that dreamy, luxe complexion of hers. Well, Miss Sheridan... I, uh, I can see I don't have to sell you on the importance of Lux Soap Care. Oh, I should say not. I've been a Lux fan for a long time. Who wouldn't be when nine out of ten top Hollywood stars depend on Lux Soap facials to keep their skin just right for the camera? There's a reason why this fragrant white soap is the choice of lovely women everywhere. Lux Soap facials really make skin lovelier. In recent tests, skin specialists found actually three out of four complexions became softer, smoother, in a short time. Thanks, Miss Maggie Sheridan, for coming tonight and for reminding us that Lux Toilet Soap is Hollywood's own beauty soap, the right care for delicate skin. It was a pleasure, Mr. Kennedy. Here's our producer, Mr. William Keeley. The curtain rises on the third act of Red River, starring John Wayne as Tom Dunson, Joanne Drew as Tess, and Walter Brennan as Groot. <laughs> took Tom Dunson's hood away from him. With Matt Garth out front, started the hall for Abilene. Why don't you say it, Groot? What's on your mind? Seems is on your mind and everybody else's. Him, Dunson. Matt, he'd be a fool to come along, wouldn't he? Most likely he'd go for help. Get a bunch of men together, huh? Nearest town, San Felipe. Yeah. Take him at least four days, four more to get back on our trail. So we got an eight-day lead on him. The men are scared, Matt, snarling and snapping at their own shadows. What do you think will happen when he, when he does come back? I don't know. We couldn't let him hang Taylor and Laredo. You ain't sorry you done it. He was wrong. Hope I'm right. I hope there's a railroad in Abilene. Six days later, Teela come racing back from where he'd been scouting up ahead. He was carrying an arrow. Look at that. Look at that. Comanche's man. This here's Comanche arrow. Well, where'd you find it? Pull it out of the steer, one of the strays. Tracks lead north. Well, do we go on? Well, which would you rather have, Laredo? What's behind or what might be ahead? Jerry. Yeah? You and Gus ride on ahead, 10 or 12 miles maybe, enough to give warning. When you got something to tell us, come back. Meantime, we start carrying rifles. Two more days. Comanche's ahead of us and Dunson behind us. And not a word yet from Cherry. Then early the next morning, still dark it was, Gus come riding in the camp like a wild man. Yes, 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 yes. Women and coffee. I seen them. Wire in a safe hand. Oh, wait, where's Cherry? What happened to Cherry? Yeah, nothing's happened to him. Women! I had pies, biscuits, and beans and coffee. Cherry's still there. Now, stop that fool talk. What happened? Yeah, yesterday afternoon, about 15 miles north, a whole wagon train up and heading for Nevada. Wagon train? Yeah, belongs to some man named Donegal. Gonna start a gambling hall in Nevada. You should see what's in them wagons. Dancing girls and uh -huh. dying stables and cases full of liquor. Oh, come on, show us yeah. away. Oh, wait, what about the Comanches? Yeah, huh? Comanches. Oh, them. Not a sign of Matt coming or going. <laughs> the news made a heap of difference. 
The boys forgot about Dunson, forgot how wore out they was, and how hungry for food that wasn't all beef. We made a full ten miles that day. Next day, we pushed even harder. Till over a ridge, we heard shooting and screaming. The wagon train wasn't far off, only them Comanches had beat us to it. It was real rough for a while, but with women in that wagon train, we'd have tore in all the engines in the territory. As the fighting was tailing off, I see Matt with one of the girls. He was getting an arrow out of her arm. What are you so mad about? It's my arm that's got the arrow, not yours. Stop talking. If he kept down like I told you, you wouldn't have got hit. This is gonna hurt. Like they say, this'll hurt you more than it does me. No, this'll hurt you. <gasps> you're, you're right, it did. All right, hold this cloth now while I... It's, it's too bad to put you to so much trouble. Yeah. I asked you before, why are you so mad? Is it because of your cattle? The cattle Cherry told me about might run off? Or maybe... Maybe you don't like the idea of helping a bunch of... A bunch of what? Yeah, that's what I thought you thought. How many men in this train? Nine. Women? Twenty. Most of them will be working for Donegal when he opens I'll up... I'll find a... out about moving into one of the oh, wagons. Oh, don't go. At least not until I've done something I've been wanting to do. Well... That's what I wanted to do. Thanks. Her name was Tess. Tess Malay. That night she called me over to a wagon and she started asking me about Matt. She said, figured it didn't matter much one way or the other. I told her about him and about Dunson. So that's the story. Now you know about Matt Garth. No wonder he's like he is. How is he? Disillusioned. Not trusting anybody. Scared, maybe. What would you do now if you were me? If I was you? But I ain't you. Say, how far do you think you'd get with a push like mine? I'd like to talk to him if, if he'll talk to me. Well, I'm hoping we ain't going to be here but a few more hours. But it's going to storm. In the morning at the latest, we should be gone. I still want to talk to him. Uh, I'll go see what I can do. Who said I'd find you out here? You are. I want to talk to you. I... You're shaking. You thought I was Dunson. How'd you know that? Groot told me. It makes things clear. It helps. What helps? I know how you feel. I'm scared, too. That's why I'm talking, because, because it's the best thing to do when you feel that way. Oh, please, you can tell me to mind my own business if you'd like, and, and if it'd help any, go on, hit me like I did you. Yeah, I, I guess I had it coming. Matt... About Dunson. Why does he think that way? Well, because he's got a place where he... Well, he'd take an empty land, see? Made it the biggest ranch in the state of Texas. Fought to keep it. And then... Well? After he'd gotten what he'd been after for so long, he finds it's worth nothing. So he started this drive. Everyone said he couldn't make it. He'd never get there. He was the only one who believed we could. I see. Well... Well, Dunson had to believe it. He started him from Missouri, and all he knew was he had to get there. And then I took the herd away from him. You love him, don't you? He must love you. And that wouldn't be hard loving you. When did a woman kiss you last, Matt? Did you like that? I've always been kind of slow in making up my mind. Maybe I can help. that night. Rain and mud. And going awful slow. Weather like this, Dunson had gain on us. And I wondered would Donegal's wagon train meet up with him and would he meet up with a girl like, like Matt had. Hey, Donegal, get out of that wagon. We got company again. What's that? Company? Well, howdy, strangers. 
Welcome to Donegal's Cafe, on the march. My name is Dunson. You see anything of a trail herd through here? Well, now, I should say we did. When? Over a week ago. They helped us out when the engines hit us. We've been patching up before moving on. How far ahead are they? Be, uh, nine days tomorrow morning. Well, we're about ready to eat, mister. Be glad to feed you. Oh, thank you. We'll stop here for a while. I'll take care of Mr. Dunson myself. How do you know my name? We can talk about that later. My wagon's over there. I believe it's your beef we'll be eating. And who told you that? The man you promised to kill. Did he tell you that, too? You're tired, aren't you? And hungry and just a little bit irritable. You'll feel better after you eat, Mr. Dunson. Coffee, Mr. Dunson? There's even brandy. Well, what are you looking at? How did you get that away from him? That bracelet. I stole it. How did you get it? I got it in the rain. Eight nights ago, before he took off with your herd. I'm wondering whether to believe you. I don't care whether you do or not. You still intend to kill him, don't you? Oh. So he went off and left you. You're in love with him? I thought you'd ask that. Can a woman love a man who'd go off and leave her? Well, she... She shouldn't. I wanted to go with him. He wouldn't take me. He said I wasn't strong enough to go, and nothing I could say or do could make him change his mind. Oh, but I wanted to go with him. So much that I... I know. How would you know? Oh, I... I suppose other people have felt that way before. They have. Why do you want to kill him, Mr. Dunson? Because he's a thief. I picked him up in the brush 14 years ago and taught him all I could. He knew what I was planning. He knew that someday it'd all be his. His land, his cattle, everything. Even talked of a woman. A woman who could bear him sons. A woman like you. Why did you want him to have a son? Because I'd built something. Built it with my own hands. And I can't live forever. I thought I had a son. But I haven't. And I want one. I'm sorry for you, Mr. Dunce. Stand up. What? Stand up and turn around. Don't tell me what to do. Oh, I apologize for my manners. Well? I don't even know your name. Millay. Tess Millay. Well, Miss Millay, I've got a deal to offer you. What kind of a deal? Half of everything I have for a son. Half of everything you've got? That's what I said. Marriage? Yeah. All right. But only if you stop now. Stop now and go back where you came from. I thought so. Then there's no deal. No. When did you fall in love with him? When I first saw him, I guess. When did... When did you fall in love with her? Who? The girl you left, walked out on. Did he tell you that? You told me. You knew how I felt when he left me. She must have felt the same way when you left her. Or can't you remember? I can remember. I hope so. Because... Because I want you to think about her while I ask you something. While I ask you to... Let me go on with you. You know what you're saying? Oh, please, I want to go with you, please. All right. Thank you. You have a gun there, haven't you? You're going to try to kill me. I'd thought about it. Well, why don't you use it? Would there be any use going if I did? We'll start in half an hour. Dunson was, we didn't know. Two miles behind us at 200. It was a hundred days now since the drive had started. This was Kansas. But no sign of nothing human, and everybody beginning to believe there weren't no railroad after all. You know, I've been thinking that Abilene just ain't. We probably missed it. Probably keep going clear up to Canada. We'll be driving herd up and down icebergs yet. Yeah, we'll find it. It's got to be there. And if it ain't, we'll keep driving until we find it. Or until Dunson finds us. Hey, wait a minute. I, I heard something. Yeah, I don't hear nothing, only the... Hey, Matt's right. I heard it, too, like a... Like a... It's a train. Railroad! Railroad! Well, 
like heroes we was riding that day into Abilene. People cheering and yelling, and us the mangiest, dirtiest bunch of cowpokes that ever come into town. But they were starved for beef. We was bringing it to them. The day was August 14, 1865. The end of the first drive on the Chisholm Trail. By night, the herd was sold. It was a buyer from the east, a fella named Melville. Here you are, Mr. Garth. Check made out to Thomas Dunson for $50,000. Rest to be paid when the tally is finished at $21 a head, less what I'm giving you now to pay off your man. They'll be celebrating, I suppose. Well, they got a right to, Mr. Melville. Yeah, there's three times in a man's life when he's got a right to yell at the moon. When he marries, when his children come, and when he finishes a job, he had to be crazy to start. <laughs> uh, tell me, when do you expect to be leaving here? I... Don't exactly know. Uh, you're going to wait for Dunson, huh? I've been talking to some of your men. Isn't the money and the fact that you got here, isn't that going to make any difference to him? No, I don't think so. Well, couldn't you... Run away? Yes. Or couldn't I talk to him? No, I'd still have to talk to him after that. Good night, Mr. Melvin. Melvin, I got here as soon as I could. Brute told me where you were. Yes. Dunson's camped a couple of miles outside of town. He says you'll be here in the morning just after sunup. He says he's going to kill you. How would you know all that unless you've been with him? Matt, did you hear what I said? He's here. He hasn't changed his mind. I didn't think he would. We saw the railroad night. Well, I thought it might make a difference, but it didn't. Nothing would. He's, he's like something you can't move. Even I've gotten to believe it's got to happen, your meeting. I came here to beg you to run away, but it wouldn't do any good. You're too much like him. You're... Matt, Matt. Tomorrow morning. It's a long way off, Tess. Tomorrow morning. He's coming, Matt. Dunson. Dunson's here. What are you going to do, Matt? Meet him out there. He knows you're here in Melville's office. He's riding up now, Matt. Dunson and about ten others. All right, just one thing, all of you. This is my fight. The rest of you stand clear. Matt, for the last time, I... What's the matter with you men? You're his friends, aren't you? Don't you know Matt has no intention of defending himself? That's right, Mr. Melville. If I haven't any such notions, must be a back door to this place. Supposing you show me where it is. Stay where you are, Matt. I've been waiting for you, Dunson. I said I'd kill you. I'm going to. Mr. Dunson? Don't draw it, Jerry. You got business with me, Cherry. I'll take care of you later. Mr. Dunson, I've said it for the last time. Draw or... You what? see that? Matt nicked him. Laredo, Gus, drag Cherry out of the way before he really gets hurt. I'm waiting for you, Dunson. Why don't you come closer? I'm walking right up to you. Won't anything make a man out of you? You told me once never to take your gun away from you. Well, I'm going to do it now. So you can hang me, Mr. Dunson? Hang you, why, you yellow-bellied chicken liver. Dunson's thrown away his gun. I don't need a gun to take care of you. I can still do it with my hands. Now, get up. Get up before this whole town around. You'll what? That's it, Matt. Tear his ears off for 14 years. I've been scared. But it's going to be all right now. It's going to be all right. Stop it. Better get back, miss. Get back. Them two's mad and hard. Oh, I'm mad, too. Good and mad. Give me that gun. Oh, you fools. You stupid fools. Stop it. Stop it, I said. Careful with that gun. You might hurt somebody. Oh, you, Tom Dunson, pretending you're going to kill him. Why, it's the last thing in the world you... And you, Matt Garth, getting your face all beaten up and all bloody. You ought to see how... You ought to see how silly you look, like like something the cat dragged. Stay still. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma what a fool I've been, expecting trouble for days when, when anybody would have a mind to know you two never... Well, what are you looking at, Dunson? Took somebody else to shoot at him, didn't it? You wouldn't do it. All right, then. All right, then, go ahead. Beat each other crazy. Maybe it'll put some sense in both of you. Go ahead. Go on. Do it. Matt, I... You better marry this girl. Yeah. Yeah, I think I... Hey, when are you going to stop telling people what to do? Right now. At least as soon as... When? Well, as soon as I tell you one thing more. Well, when we get back to the ranch, I want you to change the brand. You, Tess, give me that stick over there. You know, I'd like to give it to you. Would it do some good? Maybe later. Right now, I'm busy. Like this, Matt, see? Here's the Red River D. We'll add a G to it. 
You don't mind that, do you? Tom, I... Yeah. Now let's see about getting home. John Wayne, Joe Andrew, and Walter Brennan, our congratulations on a fine performance. Here they are at the footlights for a curtain call. Well, thank you, Bill. It was a pleasure to be here. John, you've had a busy week or two with that stage engagement in What Price Glory. Yes, you know, it's the first time I've ever been on the stage. We put it on in San Francisco, Long Beach, Pasadena, and several other towns for the benefit of the Purple Heart veterans. We're doing again at Grauman's, Grauman's Chinese Theater here Friday night. I saw where one critic referred to the show as having a million-dollar cast. Well, John Ford staged it, and we have people like Pat O'Brien, Gregory Peck, Marina Harrow, Ward Bond, and many, many others. That'll do till another cast comes (laughs) along. (laughs) John, now that you're producing your own pictures, how do you find working on the other side of the street? Now he knows why producers lose their hair, Bill. (laughs) And why some of them lose their shirts. (laughs) Joanne, we're delighted to have you here tonight for your first appearance in the Lux Radio Theater. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. This may be my first appearance here, but I've been a Lux Soap fan for a long time. And I especially like the new bath-sized cake Lux is making now. It's really grand. Thank you, Joanne. I'll pass on the good word. Now for next week. What's the play, Bill? Well, first I'll tell you the stars. They're Rosalind Russell and Robert Cummings. And the play is that sparkling comedy success from Columbia Pictures, What a Woman. It's a fast-moving romance that's a perfect recipe for an entertaining evening here next Monday. That sounds like hit material, Bill. Well, good night and good luck. Good night and thank you. Beaver Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Rosalind Russell and Robert Cummings in What a Woman. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. Walter Brennan appeared through the courtesy of Universal International Studios. Producers of Red Canyon, starring Anne Blythe and Howard Duff. Heard in tonight's cast were Jeff Chandler as Matt, Bernard Phillips as Cherry, Jeff Corey as Teeler, and Jimmy Ogg, Bill Johnstone, Alan Reed, Herbert Butterfield, Willard Waterman, Lillian Bayef, Lou Krugman, Jay Novello, Ed Max, and Eddie Marr. Our play was adapted by S.H. Barnett, and our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Our Lux Radio Theater production of Red River has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. Hollywood's own beauty soap. The complexion care used regularly by nine out of ten lovely screen stars. This is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear What a Woman, starring Rosalind Russell and Robert Cummings. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows over these same stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>